everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to show you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can just skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we don't have any further information on Reichbusters, Enchanters, Steam Watchers, or Darkest Dungeon the board game, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc this week, we wanted to reiterate that all the files are with the factory and we are now in the process of designing the white samples and validating all the digital files. Designing the white samples means that we get to see the exact materials that will be used to produce the game, the difference being that they will not be printed. It's at this stage that if we don't like something quality-wise, we can have the factory make changes, although that is rarely the case. Now, I personally have been saying that we were going to be skipping this part of the phase. Uh, now, I personally have been saying that we were going to be skipping this part of the production phase in order to save some time, and that is still true from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? Well, yes. You see, the factory will be taking pictures of everything and sending it to us for verification, but we'll skip the approximately month-long process of actually sending the white samples to us physically because of all the back and forth that happens. So we're still trying to streamline the production phase as much as we can to get the product into your hands as quickly as possible. On another front, we've also been working on the storage solution with game trays, and we've got an update for you there too. For the component tray, the dedicated cube bays were replaced with generic ones that can interchangeably hold the order cubes or flags, whichever you prefer. The middle tray has some more generic slots for more bases or just random stuff left up to your discretion for use and will also house the larger tiles from the ARS Nova expansion on top. The token tray has been designed so that you can choose where to put what, offering both corrugated and smooth bottomed bays. The corrugated bays will hold tokens at a 45 degree angle and ensure that they won't slide down when the bay isn't completely full. Each tray will also have a lid which will have this design on it, prominently displaying the Joan of Arc logo with both the Mythic Games and Game Trays logos in the corners. The top tray will have more generic storage space and room to house more of the larger tiles on top too. Finally, the card tray has been designed to hold all your cards securely, allowing enough room for having them sleeved as well. And it will also come with a lid, so those cards will be safely sequestered in their own place. We hope that you can see that we're putting in the work and trying to make this as stunning as it can be. And kudos to Game Trays 2 for doing some great design work. For Solomon Kane this week, we wanted to kindly remind everyone that Leo will announce on his live Q&A video tomorrow the time when Solomon Kane will be made available in our eShop for pre-order and that there are super limited quantities. So if you or someone you know really wants in on these overstocks, be sure to tune in for that live video tomorrow. On a different note, we noticed that the illustrious Rado has done run-through and final thought videos for Solomon Kane. While he did have points of criticism, he was very impressed with it and found it quite enjoyable. So please check those out and see his full explanation. You can find the link to those videos in the description below. Today for Super Fantasy Brawl, we're very happy to announce some exciting collaborations that we've signed to bring Super Fantasy Brawl to even more players around the world. First, for our Spanish backers, we've signed a collaboration with Ingenio Games. Although a fairly fresh company, the Ingenio Games team has everything needed to bring Super Fantasy Brawl to the market. Passion, attention to detail, and a love for games. So we're thrilled to partner with them in joining their portfolio of games and becoming part of their select few. Furthermore, we're excited to announce that Super Fantasy Brawl will be coming in a very new language for all of us, Russian. 
With a vast portfolio of Euro and miniature games representing hits like Terraforming Mars, Bloodborne, Mage Knight, and most recently Dune Imperium, Super Fantasy Brawl has found its Russian home in the offices of Lavka Games. The core retail game will be available for a retail release in Russian later this year. And there are many more things being discussed for Super Fantasy Brawl, and we have lots of plans to make the game available throughout the world and bring the magic of the Super Brawl to as many houses as possible. If you want to support this effort, then make sure you ask your friendly local game store, no matter where you are around the world, to bring the game to their shelves. This way, we'll reach even more people, increase our already superb community, and bring you the most exciting organized play that you can possibly imagine. Finally, the pledge manager for round two will remain open until May 14th. So don't forget to complete your pledges with your shipping details and pay the shipping fees by that date. It saves a lot of headaches later on down the road. For Hell the Last Saga this week, our development teams are focused on the finalization of songs 10 through 13, which have undergone significant changes following our internal tests. Indeed, the increase in power of the heroes on all the previous songs could, in some cases, yield extreme results that we could not ignore. We were also not completely satisfied with the conclusion of the saga as it had been planned originally. The extreme situations the players experienced throughout the entire campaign demanded a more striking climax. We have some very strong ideas, but we can't tell you more as you can imagine. It's hard to go into detail without spoiling something. Additionally, you should know that the new rulebook is being proofread and is waiting to receive a complete index and the replacement of the images of the first prototype with the final graphics. It should go into translation this week, and as soon as the English version is finalized, we'll post the new rulebook here for your comments and feedback. Concerning playtests, the recent lockdown in Paris has really disrupted their schedule of priorities and their way of working, forcing them to physically separate and work on table, table, Tabletop Simulator again, whereas they really prefer real testing, which nothing replaces, frankly. So, to be on the safe side, we've decided to set up all the scenarios of the game on Tabletop Simulator for this test campaign. The selection of the French test teams is almost finalized, and the lucky ones will receive the specifications soon so that play tests can start in May. Concerning production, we are at the stage of the final factory estimate, which puts us in front of the tricky problem of the global rise of raw material prices for the past few months. And we're doing what we can to find the best solutions and adjustments to finalize this stage without compromise. Now, we've not only made gameplay changes, but also some cosmetic changes to the game as well. To exemplify what we mean, we revisited a miniature that was rather controversial during the campaign. The quarry token is used in the game to mark the hexes where opportunities for the hunting action appear, which can provide much needed food for the heroes and their familiars. Thanks to a stretch goal, these six tokens will be replaced by miniatures. Our art director, Christophe Madura, had decided to capture the moment the hunted receives a fatal arrow with the miniature. From a strictly gameplay point of view, we realized during development that this presented a problem for two reasons. Number one, the quarry simply represents an opportunity that must be validated by a successful test. So it's not necessarily completed as indicated by the current miniature. And two, some scenarios use this element to represent a herd on the run from a narrative point of view. So you can probably imagine the absurdity of seeing all these poor beasts crossing the board with an arrow in their neck. So we opted in good conscience for a more conventional representation because the gap between the artistic expression and the gameplay was simply too big. Our sculptor went back to the original concept art an unaware and frail doe that will soon become a target. We've just released a test copy in resin, but it's still a work in progress. 
will more than likely show it painted very soon if Seb has anything to do with it. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or just to see what he might spoil, but let's give him a break on that. He doesn't spoil a lot, normally. But that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.